is a lag mic. Is that better? Or, uh, make your pardon. Thank you, Margo, and thank you everyone for being here uh, this evening. It's great to see a good turnout as we kick off uh, Readdress Week here in Vancouver, and a number of different great events to drill down on our housing crisis and to, to gather uh, the best ideas and best feedback, uh, input from all over the world, but also lots of uh, people locally here, uh, local leaders, uh, giving uh, giving their take on the, the crunch that we face with affordable housing. So uh, thanks, uh, Margaret, for recognizing the Musqueam, Squamish, and Slavitz first and foremost. Uh, they uh, certainly, as the three First Nations here, have uh, an interesting set of decisions ahead of them as they uh, look to developing about 120 acres within the city of Vancouver that they have uh, recently acquired uh, back from the federal and provincial governments. So it's a partnership that we're working closely with them on and uh, we're looking forward to, to seeing how that evolves. Uh, I just want to recognize uh, the team that's here at the front table, uh, the panel that we have of uh, distinguished people who pay a lot of attention and uh, dedicate their lives. Uh, I'd say even Francis dedicates their lives to our life to housing. <laughs> Most of her column inches. Uh, but thank you for dedicating your time to be here. And uh, to the sponsors, just want to recognize sponsors for this week of, um, of housing forums and, uh, and premier partners being UBC through uh, support from the Social Science Research Council of Canada and Ban City. So uh, some great uh, partners uh, that made it possible on the sponsorship side, along with uh, our accessibility partners, the Allard School of Law, BC Nonprofit Housing Association, and Urban Development Institute. So uh, all partners to make sure we could bring uh, some of the sharpest minds from around the world to share their experience in other big cities that are, uh, are facing similar challenges, and, uh, and also to convene in different spaces around the city over the course of the week. So maybe just to, to uh, lay some context, I, I don't think any of this comes as a surprise, but we uh, five years ago put together a, uh, a, an affordable housing and homelessness strategy for the city of Vancouver, 2011 to 2021. And I don't think uh, any of us would have uh, predicted how intense uh, the pressure has become five years later. And we find ourselves in a situation where we need to revisit the plan, we, we're calling it a reset, because the, the pressure on the housing uh, realm here is uh, off the charts, and certainly the real estate market has gone far beyond what anyone would have predicted. And uh, though it's cooled off the plate, we still face a, an enormous disconnect between uh, the global capital that's driven up the price of real estate across our region and uh, the incomes people make here. And despite the fact that we're uh, the strongest economy in Canada, booming, creating jobs, we uh, have an absolute disconnect with what those jobs pay and what it costs to live here, certainly what it costs to buy a home here. So we know uh, we can take action to address this. We, um, we have been taking action at City Hall, you know, through the course of the five-year plan, we've dramatically exceeded our targets to, to build rental housing, for example in partnership with the private sector. We've seen good results there. We've had good partnerships with the province, getting supportive housing bills. We, um, we haven't quite hit our targets on social housing, and, uh, and certainly we have real challenges with SROs uh, falling apart and, uh, and inadequate investment in low-income housing. So we've, we've got some gaps that have emerged over five years, but the, the overall context of it's, it's basically impossible for young people to afford to buy a house uh, or a place to live in Vancouver. Uh, certainly not a house, but even an apartment. And at this point, uh, rental is extremely challenged, the lowest vacancy rates in history and persisting for many years now. So we have to uh, take action. This is a critical time, again, in our city's history. I, I feel like since uh, the day I announced uh, running for mayor, which is coming on uh, nine years ago this winter, I talked about an affordable housing crunch at that point, but um, it's gotten far, far worse than what we were facing nearly a decade ago, despite actions that we've taken. So we've got to do more. We've got to revisit 
what we do in these coming years, we've got to look to the best examples of what's happened around the world in cities that have faced uh, challenges comparable to this. Although, I, from, I've been saying this for a few weeks now, my, my sense is no city has had this scale of escalation. I think Hong Kong and Vancouver have, have seen this dramatic short timeline uh, price increase. And um, many cities have, have gone through affordability crunches over many more years, certainly San Francisco, New York, London, Sydney being examples. But I think here in Vancouver, we, are, we may be setting the record in terms of how fast this has happened and how uh, acute the impact is on people who live and work here. So we've, we've got to jump on, uh, on this uh, in terms of the next steps. And looking at uh, a couple of the big issues that face cities like Vancouver right now, the, the role of global capital in uh, housing markets, we need a better understanding of that. There's a lot of discussion about it, or it'll be good to have experts weigh in on that front. The, uh, the cumulative impact of government cuts to uh, investment in housing, our federal government, all but uh, evaporated their support to housing over several decades, uh, are now coming back into the arena, but there's a huge impact from that and, and from provincial governments reducing the amount that they invest in, in, uh, in social housing in particular. But understanding how that compares with what's happened in other, other cities around the world with their governments. The commodification of housing, we've had a lot of discussion about this, but the impact of, uh, of that global capital and, and uh, the lack of regulation, which we're now weighing in with things like the empty homes tax, uh, short-term rental regulation, uh, more, more uh, enforcement, at least on real estate industry activity and, and speculation that has been driving prices up. So we uh, also need to understand the connection to the growth of our economy. We want this, the economy to grow. We certainly want to shape that growth. What's the impact of it on the housing arena right now? What's the impact of, uh, of people coming here from around the world, some with uh, lots of money and able to start businesses and invest, and some uh, refugees, uh, for example, from Syria. So we need to understand the, the flow of people into Vancouver and, and how that's affecting it. So we're uh, excited to be hosting this summit this week here in Vancouver uh, and, and gathering more ideas to shape our next steps. Uh, we're looking forward to uh, a, lot, a diverse array of, impact, of, uh, of influence that will help us uh, go forward. We've been, we've been struggling with this uh, for, for years. Our City of Vancouver staff I think, do incredible work on the housing arena, particularly considering housing is, is not first and foremost the uh, responsibility of cities. A lot of cities are having to step into it and, and take a much more active role given the level of impact of, on, at the street level and on residents. Um, Ontario is different. Toronto has a much more direct role to play due to the downloading in the 90s from the Ontario government. But here in BC, we've, we've had to step up dramatically and I, I kudos and hats off to our staff and to uh, all the people that help our staff here locally to grapple with the problems that we have and uh, the challenges we have with resources. But we've got our work to do on that front and, uh, and the input from everyone here will be enormously helpful tonight and through the week to uh, shape those next steps as I said. So again a big thank you to all of you for being involved, for being engaged in this and uh, again appreciation to the sponsors for uh, making sure we can do this this fall and, uh, and help set our direction on housing. So again, a big thanks and uh, we'll look forward to hearing from uh, the panel here in the room and feedback from everyone here. Thanks a lot. Have a good evening.